Hey, it's time for a Helios update. Uh, my student, uh, Cato, just brought this in to me and I'm super stoked. Um, say how, hello, Cato. <laughs> hello. And uh, he's doing this for a science fair. He's updating Helios and we're gonna make it where we can have two Helioses next to each other working in the same work envelope, which is gonna be super awesome. And he has to get it done by February, otherwise he gets a bad grade, but he's doing amazing work and he's a good kid. So I have no idea why he would drop the ball at this point. So expect a lot of updates in the upcoming months. I, by February, I don't know, middle of February, we should have a working prototypes. Um, so anyways, uh, this is, this is the, uh, the arms that we brought in. We have the proximal arm. This, this will attach to the base at this axis back here and then the distal arm and then we have yet to put on a um, an extruder head and all that stuff but this is the main magic uh, has has all of the motion already working we just have to mount it onto a base which um, should happen pretty quick with all the steppers um, so we uh, let me just run you through some of the things that we have done to, to make it a little bit easier for people to build um, one nice thing um, that we have here is we have a block here where we can clamp down onto the belts and so this is our this is our tensioning system um, so we don't have any play whatsoever in these belts and we'll we'll have a completely different system this didn't work very well for what we're going to do on the base um, um, we're going to have we're going to have to do that a little different but we have we have something in mind um, when we get to the base so everything will will have some nice screws you can turn to, to put everything in tension um, uh, let's see, another interesting thing we did was we replaced the rails with carbon fiber and these are so light and more rigid than we would need and we can go as tall as we want. The idea is we'll print a real base, uh, a, a, a pretty small base and then when we want to print really high we'll, we'll elevate it over the print surface and then you can go, um, you can go, you can print below the bottom of, of the robot if you really need to get <laughs> really tall prints. Um, but for the most part, people will want to print, you know, um, fairly small things. And so you'll just be working in this region and the, the base of the printer doesn't need to be that tall. And so we'll just have extra area up here, but this is very light so it can swing around without getting in the way. Uh, let's see, um, we have some extreme mechanical advantage here. Um, here you'll see that we have, what was it, 55T? We have 55 teeth on these small pulleys, and um, so this is just a transmission line here. So we have no mechanical advantage here, but you can see these pulleys here have 168 teeth. And uh, what we don't have here is we're going to have a secondary axis that's on the base that goes, to these big pulleys will go to a smaller pulley, which will go again to a big pulley back to the driven pulley. So there'll be a compound um, um, belting situation which will end up with a 30 to 1 um, ratio which will allow for um, any stepper that you find to be um, to be usable anything that you'd get off of a normal 3d printer most steppers you buy are uh, 200 steps per rotation and um, for the last Helios I made I got special ones that were 400 steps per rotation and they were just on the edge of acceptable and uh, I think the uh, mechanical advantage I had was 12. And so I'm going from, I'm, I'm more than double, we're, uh, Kato's more than doubling the uh, mechanical advantage. And so we'll be able to get away with the uh, the cheaper steppers. And um, it's not that expensive to buy the, the, the other steppers. It's just a little bit harder to find. And I really want um, us to be able to grab any stepper without people really thinking about it and have it work. So. Um, nothing's worse than like thinking that your machine's going to work because it, the part looks right. It looks like everything moves, but the print, it just doesn't print as well. So this, this should print well for everyone, no matter what they pick up. Uh, let's see what else there. Um, we, um, we implemented a system. Um, we call it our base unit system. Um, there's a whole bunch of layers with belts going this way and that way. And we were having trouble keeping track of what goes where and whatnot. So we came up with a system, kind of like Legos, where we have certain layer heights. So we have, um, everything's in multiples of 10 millimeters. So this bottom of this arm is 20 millimeters and then 10 millimeters and another 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. 
and that system allows us to easily piece this together very easily. And um, by the way, everything is completely parametric, so if somebody comes in and say, I want to use belts that are twice as thick or blah blah blah, they can type those things in and the, the design will repopulate uh, to accommodate that different um, base unit size. And there's other things you can change. Um, right now we have fairly short arms. How long are they? Um, 130 uh, that, that 130 millimeters is, is how long the arms are. I usually shoot for 150, but um, the printers that I was using for the class that Kato's in, um, they were all, they, the biggest we could print was about 130. So we just decided to go with, um, um, go with fairly small arms that people can print on very small printers. And the, the actual exact, exact printer that we got, have is the uh, Monoprice Mini Select. And so it's like 120 millimeters by 120 millimeter build plate. 125 if you like really like squeeze every, every millimeter out. And so if you have a printer, you're going to be able to print this printer. There, there really are no, there's not very many printers smaller than the Monoprice Mini. And, um, and oh, and uh, let's see, the other thing that's interesting that we updated is everything in this is, we, since we added this tensioning, we're allow, allowing all the parts to actually be solid. So this arm is printed as one solid piece. The uh, distal arm is printed as one solid piece. And so there's no adjustment. I, in the last one, I had length adjustment to, to tension the belts, but now we've gone with solid, solid pieces with really high infill. And so these are super rigid. And I think that's it. Anything else, Kato? I don't think so. All right. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this, and in in, we should have a lot of updates in January. So keep tuned.